If this is the first time you set a steel tub, you want to make sure that that tub doesn't move at all before you get your drywall up and put your tile up, and really even before you start putting your waste and overflow on. Before we actually get started, I also want you to understand how important it is to make sure that that tub is level as you can get it on all three sides. And for that to happen, we have to have this horizontal board right here dead level and at the perfect elevation. Now we're going to go back to the beginning. And what I'm going to do right here is take that flashlight and look down through the hole to make sure that there's no wiring under there and to find out where the water pipe is that serves that valve. And I'm gonna run the drill down through there and then I'm gonna to go to the ceiling below to find out where I come out. I like to try to go ahead and find all the nice little surprises I can in the very beginning of things and then make my plans accordingly. And as luck would have it, where that drill came out was right beside that beam. That's why you saw me making a 45 degree offset and an overflow so we can get on the other side of this beam and put our trap on. The quickest and easiest way to get my client's water back on was just gonna go ahead and cut these lines and take the valve out with the little piece of fiberglass. Yes, right here I am loosening compression nuts on a waste and overflow and removing that plate. We're going to go ahead and pull all this out of the way. Let's go back just for a second to those compression joints on that waste and overflow. Those are not made to be buried under sheetrock. You only want to use those like in a place that you need to service things like on a P-trap under a cabinet. Now that the copper has been cleaned and reamed, we're going to go ahead and press these caps on here so I can get the water back on for my clients. Okay, let's take a look at this cavity right here where the fiberglass unit was. You can tell there's a pretty thick mortar bed right there. So we're going to have to do a little bit of framing. The two main goals of the framing is to go ahead and raise the floor up, you know, so the tub will sit flush with the tile. And then the next thing we're going to have to do is furl that wall out behind us because that fiberglass unit was actually two inches wider than the steel tub. Every time I had to go downstairs and saw up my lumber, I was so grateful. It was such a beautiful day outside. And speaking of being grateful, I felt very fortunate that that fiberglass unit was literally two inches wider than the steel tub. So a two by four on each stud and two strips of osb on each stud and everything turned out just perfect so i'm going to do everything i can to make sure that i do not scratch that tub i'm going to tape up the corner of the tile right here i'm going to get my belt off and get ready to wrestle this thing into the hole i want to go ahead and make sure that you notice how far that i've got the sheet rock cut back to the left right there you know, you have to have the distance of 60 inches plus 30 inches deep so you can, you know, have room to get that tub in front of the opening and then lay it down over in there. We talked about how important it was not to have this tub move. And a great tip to help you accomplish that goal is starting these screws at that little angle right there and applying just a matter right of torque on the head and having that head catch right there on that lip just like that on as many studs as you can get a screw into. In just a second, we're gonna take a look at some tubs in a house that's being framed up, and I just want you to have a really good view of the lip on these tubs, because like I said earlier, they sit on that two by four that's running horizontal in the frame, which is called a ledger, and we're gonna talk about how important that is and how you can set that ledger here in just a second. Let's take just a quick look at something that you definitely do not want to have happen, and that is leave a gap right here in between your ledger and the lip of the tub. Over time, there is no doubt that is going to settle. The best thing to do is go ahead and throw a level on the tub, and then get your tape measure off the floor and measure to the bottom of that lip, and then you'll know how high to set the top of your ledger board. 
I'm hoping a nice look from behind the tub will, you know, kind of complete the picture for you is this ledger and the way the tub sits on it and how important it is, like I've said repeatedly, <laughs> to get this right. Can I step in it? You can step in it. Yep, it is rock solid. I was just going to, I don't know if I should sit down. You can do whatever you like in there. We get... I only have one more little board to add, like right behind where your head is, but I mean, it's pretty dang secure as it is now we're going to go ahead and read these levels on all three sides of the tub and make sure we're spot on the money before we go ahead and build that waste and overflow with the offset in it and speaking of the overflow here we go we're going to go ahead and get started with that and as you can see I got plenty of putty on the metal part of the shoe and we've thrown a little pipe dope around that rubber gasket right there and when I tighten the shoe on here, I do like to get it really snug, but I don't want it so tight that I can't move it around. You never know how you're going to have to twist that, especially if you're making an offset in it. Now that we've got that shoe twisted to a good starting point so we can avoid that joist under there and then the beam under that, we're going to go ahead and get the measurement and glue the T on here and get the T leveled up. And the next thing we're going to do is build a little offset to the top of the overflow hole. And one of the main things you want to do right here is make sure that you are, you know, precisely under the hole from center to center. And that your offset is a, you know, the perfect distance off the back of the tub. So that little black gasket right there sits perfectly. And then when you go to screw things down from the front, you don't have a gap behind there. So with everything in place in just the right spot, all we need to do now is throw our cover plate on there and we're going to get ready to get this thing trapped. I guess it's kind of needless to say it's a good idea to get the water out of the old trap before you cut it out. Um, you know, that water stinks pretty bad and you definitely do not want to spill that in the ceiling. I'm going to confess, getting this thing re-trapped was, it, it was irritating. Um... I don't know if you can see right there under my right forearm, but I did not cut enough sheetrock out of my way to push the trap on there. And I had to pull the thing back down. And then this is what was left in the joints. And I had to <laughs> clean that stuff out of there and move the sheetrock out of my way and try it again. But eventually we made it happen. So before we start to hang this valve over this tub, we're going to go ahead and uh, cut a little protection out of that cardboard so we don't scratch or chip the tub in case we drop something while we're hanging that valve. So we're going to head down to the truck right here and get this valve built. And you definitely want that up facing the um, shower head. Quite a few years ago, Renee and I ran a crew of construction guys putting plumbing systems in houses. And you'd be amazed every once in a while one of them, sure enough, would build that valve upside down, and then we would have to go <laughs> go back and cut that out and, of course, you know, get it straightened out. I always like to put a cap on my uh, spout stub out. That way, when you turn the water on and you have that um, drop air 90 capped off with a nipple and cap, that you make sure the entire valve has been pressurized for the test. That cardboard laying on the lip of the tub does make me a little more comfortable, but honestly, <laughs> I am a little nervous handling the cat's paw and the hammer around that tub. It would be so disappointing at this stage in the game to drop something in that tub and chip it. But anyways, we're going to go ahead and hang this valve. We're getting pretty close to having this thing wrapped up. Before I build and solder and hang these valves, I always like to ask my client, you know, is there a specific height that they want the um, shower head to come out at? And then I'll go from there accordingly. And I always like to make my tub spout about four inches off of the um, top of the tub. So you have a little room for the tile and the spout. And then eight inches in between the spout and the valve so everything will trim out really nice. As you see, we're going to go ahead and get the hot and the cold tied up and pressed up. And then you're going to see me throw a nipple and a cap up there on that drop air 90. And that way, when we turn the water on to everything, it will be fully tested. 
And I hope you also noticed that there is definitely a cartridge in that valve. And if you do not put that cartridge in that valve and just put the little test cap in there, um, the hot and cold water will mix through the entire house. All we have to do now is make sure that that board is the correct depth in the wall so everything will trim out really nice and get our strap on the valve so it doesn't move around much. And then we're just going to wait on the phone call that the tile man is done and we'll be back to trim this thing out. Before we start to trim this out, if you're not subscribed to our channel already, would you hit that subscribe button, please? And if you're getting some value out of this video, hit the like button as well. I realize I should have started this video with this, but you definitely want to make sure that you unbox and carefully inspect your tub before you leave the box store with it or wherever you're going to get your tub. You might be very surprised how challenging it is to find a good tub that's not chipped or warped. This is why earlier I was talking about having that board set in the wall at the correct depth so you can get those screws to catch into the valve body. And if it's too far forward, um, the little sleeve behind that handle right there will stick out too far and leave a gap. So you're going to see some ugly rough brass and leave a way for water to get back in the wall. This is a great time to mention that we love Delta products. We're not sponsored by them or we're really not sponsored by anybody. Um, but I'm telling you that because I want you to know that we'll leave a link to these products in the description below and a few of these tools like these number 15 rigid tubing cutters and a few other tools that we need to get this little project done. This is a perfect example of a great benefit to having this Delta tub trim kit is the adapter that you put on that stub out right there for the tub spout. They make for a bulletproof install. They are very forgiving as far as the distance goes that you can solder them up off the wall and still have a great product. So when you pull that diverter button down, you know you're not having water shoot back the hair behind the tub spout and going down the wall. They actually offer a version of that adapter right there that comes with a little Allen screw in it. And since we're on the subject of tub spouts, we're going to go ahead and leave a link above and in the description below to a video about removing and replacing tub spouts. And you will also get to see what happened to one of our clients, a pretty unfortunate incident. He just has some really bad luck. Speaking of bad luck, that adapter just would not take, and that's why you saw me do something I despised doing earlier, and that is sticking my flux brush right there in the joint to get that flux to retake. Um, and then what's bad about that is, is you're picking up the impurities from your joint and then sticking them right back in your flux, and it just makes your flux nasty and makes it harder for your flux to do part of its job in cleaning the joint. Now that we have our toe spout sticking straight down, we're gonna go ahead and remove the test nippling cap out of the wall and get ready to tape and dope the shower arm. Um, and I will go ahead and leave a link above and a description below to a video about applying Teflon tape and some pipe dope in case you're not certain of exactly how to do that. This is the way I was taught, it seemed like forever ago to get the shower arm twisted in here and not leave scars on it. You can just go ahead and stick the handle of your channel locks in there and uh, put some torque on there like that. Now, this is not the shower head that came with the trim kit. This is something the clients had and uh, they wanted me to install that for them. So, of course, I'm going to do what it takes to keep my clients happy if at all possible. Occasionally, I will have to gently tell a person what they're asking for just simply is not a good idea because it poses a threat to their plumbing system or their home or their health. Now, if you have a good one or two lines that you gently break news to people like that, I would love to know what those are because I find that to be very uncomfortable every time I have to do it. I did choose to go with a white caulk here to get everything sealed up in the little gaps of the grout, but I'm going to tell you, man, it was pretty challenging trying to get that cleaned up out of that black grout. And here we are all finished up. You can see, you know, everything turned out pretty good. Um, one little piece of corner round down there for the bottom of the tub apron. Um, 
filled up the gap in between the tile and the tub. So the homeowner was really pleased with the end results.